Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy DeYoung. Welcome to Prophecy Today video. On the broadcast today, we're going to look at current events as they relate to the end-time scenario that can be found in Bible prophecy. For example, this week on our radio broadcast, and by the way, you can go to our website, prophecytoday.com, PTRN, Prophecy Today Radio Network, and hear the interview that I had with Colonel Bob McGinnis from Washington, D.C. We talked about the United Nations General Assembly, the part it is playing in this world, and how geopolitically it is a platform for people to propagandize the world. For example, President Hamadinejad did that. You need to hear what Bob had to say about the United Nations General Assembly this last week. Rob Congdon, Dr. Congdon is our man who looks at the European Union. We were talking about how the German foreign minister is pushing for the rest of the European Union to get on board with Turkey as they endeavor to try to become a member state in the European Union. Well, what about that? Is the Islamic population of Turkey going to hinder that? Or will it enhance an opportunity for Islam to move in and take over the European Union? Dr. Rob Congdon talks about that. Go to our website, prophecytoday.com, PTRN. You can listen to these interviews that we did this last Saturday on our nationwide radio talk program. However, this week our focus should be on the conclusion of the 10-month moratorium on construction in the Jewish settlements located in Judea and Samaria. Our point man, our broadcast partner in Jerusalem is David Dolan. And David, this is really a hot issue for the near future and the peace talks, is it not? Well, that's right, Jimmy. It was known all along, and uh, many here were questioning at the time and are still questioning why did Prime Minister Netanyahu agree to um, initiate these talks, or to attend the opening of these talks? The Obama administration, of course, initiated it uh, just a month before the settlement freeze was due to expire, knowing he couldn't keep it in place. He'd already promised several of his coalition partners in his government that it would be a 10-month freeze only, that he wouldn't do anything to extend it, and that has been confirmed recently by the uh, leaders of all those parties. So he really has no choice but to lift this. Certainly the Obama administration behind the scenes is pushing hard for Israel to continue with this freeze. But if Netanyahu does that, he risks losing his coalition government and uh, having new elections. So uh, he's obviously very reluctant to do that. Thank you, David. David Dolan from Jerusalem. Danny Dayan is also in Israel. He lives in the area of Judea and Samaria. He is the chairman of Yesha. The Yeshik Council is made up of the leaders of the Jewish settlements, some 200 of them in that area of Judea and Samaria, often referred to as the West Bank, not a good term. But, Danny, let me ask you about this. Were not the Jewish settlements actually first put in place for the security needs of the Jewish state of Israel? Yes, uh, well, I, I must say that uh, even uh, uh, the, the, the fact is that uh, uh, the Palestinian state, if it is injected on the hills of Judea and Samaria, uh, will become immediately, in a matter of uh, weeks or months in historic terms, that immediately it will become an uh, Iranian enclave, an Iranian proxy state uh, between two of America's staunchest allies, uh, Israel and Jordan, uh, that will destabilize completely uh, the regime in Jordan and will endanger uh, Israel's very existence. Uh, we already made this experiment of uh, creating, injecting a, a Palestinian independent state that was in Gaza, and every single penny that was contributed to that state by the international community, was, that was very generous indeed, but every penny was spent on amassing armaments uh, to, con to convert uh, that state into a launching pad for aggression against Israel. And it's uh, obvious that the same thing will happen if, God forbid, uh, uh, Israel withdraws from the hills of Judea and Samaria and it becomes an even larger launching pad for even more dangerous aggression against Israel. Danny, I've got to ask you about how the Bible helps us to understand the final solution for this problem. The Word of God is absolute, and it says the Jewish people will be able to have this land forever. Yes, you know, Jimmy, uh, in the uh, speech uh, of uh, President Barack Obama in the General Assembly of the United States, the Nations a, a few days ago, 
Uh, there was, uh, as a matter of fact, one sentence I liked, and he talked about uh, the ancient homeland of the Jewish people. I am not sure I am quoting him exactly, but that was the notion. Now, I really cannot understand how you can reconcile this with his pressure to forbid Jews to build homes in Hebron and in Shiloh, in Bethel and in Elon More. That's a, a, a contradiction. That's a, a thing that you really cannot reconcile. So he was wrong uh, in, on, the, on the historical observation, but he was uh, completely wrong uh, on the political conclusion. Danny Dayan, chairman of the Yeshik Council, made up of the leaders of the Jewish settlements throughout Judea and Samaria. In my conversations with David Dolian and Danny Dayan, we talked about the end of the construction moratorium, and this is going to be so that those Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria can continue uh, their building projects that they started some 10 months ago. This is very interesting. But how is this stopping of the moratorium on construction throughout Judea and Samaria going to have an effect on the peace process? Everybody's talking about how it's going to be just a a, a game stopper most likely. Well, everybody in the state of Israel wants peace, uh, but they say that, uh, indeed, you're not going to just have us dictated to by the rest of the world what we can do in any piece of real estate that's ours in the state of Israel, and uh, indeed, whether we can build or not, that's not your responsibility. It's the Israeli government and the citizens of Israel. By the way, speaking of peace, all the Jews want peace, but most of the Palestinians would like to have peace as well. So why then is Israel taking such a strong stand on the Jewish settlements and wanting to continue their construction in these areas. Let me just remind you, Danny Dion brought to the table that the settlements have been and will continue to be a major force in the security for the state of Israel. That's basically what they were established for after the 67 war in the areas of Judea and Samaria. People refer to that as West Bank, not a good term, but in the area biblically referred to as Judea and Samaria. I brought to your attention, these are major agricultural areas, the foodstuffs for most of the citizens of Israel, and many of those in the European Union will eat from these products that were grown right in the area of Judea and Samaria. It's an unbelievably wonderful agricultural area. Great production coming out of that part of the world. But most important to most of the Jewish settlers is that God promised them this land. It is an absolute from the scriptures, from the prophetic scenario found in God's word, uh, that the Jewish people would get this land. You have to go all the way back to the Abrahamic covenant. That would be found over in chapter 15 of the book of Genesis, and really even established first with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, where the Lord said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. This is a physical nation. This is not a universal body of people, a physical nation. And we know through the sons of promise, Isaac and Jacob, that the Jewish people have come into existence, and that's the nation that God was promising to Abraham. He told him he would give him a piece of real estate. In chapter 15, he begins to describe that piece of real estate ten times what they have today. But in the book of Ezekiel, the Lord does again commit to the Jewish people he will give them this land. Ezekiel chapter 34, starting in verse 15, reveals that 18 times the Lord says, I will find my people wherever they have been scattered all across the world. I will bring them into the land of their forefathers. I will feed them like a good shepherd feeds his flock in a opportunity to provide for the Jewish people. I will give them this land. You know, if God says something one time, I believe it, it settles it for me. He says it 18 times, you better be paying attention. In chapter 36 of the book of Ezekiel, 35 times he refers to the land. Starting in verse 8, the Lord tells Ezekiel to preach to the land. Tell the land it's going to have to be productive. It's going to multiply men and beasts on the land. And in verse 22 of chapter 36, we find out why God is doing this. Because he said, I don't do this for the Jewish people, for Israel or Judah, but I do it for my holy namesake. You see, the Lord, when he could swear by nothing greater, swore by his name, he would bring them into the land. It's an absolute. The Lord has to 
fulfill his promise or he's not God. He is God. He has and is and will continue in the future to fulfill his promise. Let me just throw this in. Study sometime Ezekiel 35, where it talks about a people, the Edomites, those who went to Mount Seir, the Palestinian people of today would rise up. They would kill the Jewish people. That's verse 5. And in verse 10, they would take the land from the Jewish people. Uh, These are prophecies found in God's word. They will be fulfilled. Ezekiel 37, verses 15 to 23, even says that the area of Judea and Samaria will ultimately break into a second Jewish state, the state of Judah. The stage, of course, is being set for that to happen. But everything else in God's word that he has promised the Jewish people through the prophetic passages given to us by these ancient Jewish prophets says that the Jewish people will come into a land, a land that he's promised to give them as the area of Judea and Samaria, including the city of Jerusalem, He will prosper them on the land. He does it because of his holy namesake. And the rest of the world is going to try to battle the Jewish people out of this land that he's promised to give them. I think when you join the side of those who are opposed to what the Jewish people are doing, fulfilling Bible prophecy, you're talking in the face of God. You're saying, no, wait a minute. No, God can't do this. God is not in charge. Who does he think he is? We're the ones that will make those decisions. My dear friend, the word of God is absolute. Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. And in this broadcast today, you have to be aware of the fact we are quickly moving to the location where all of Bible prophecy is going to be fulfilled in time. God's word is, uh, well, setting the stage. The last drama is about to begin. The curtain is just about to go up. But remember, before all of these prophecies are fulfilled, the rapture of the church takes place. Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, trumpet God sounds, and you and I who know Christ as Lord and Savior are out of here. Having said that, nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until... 